as many of you know of course you do know that I am the mighty one angel snub number seven and I have been on this platform this social media called YouTube since November or December of 2007 and I can testify that even going way back then and some of you were children in 2007 you were 13, 14, 17 you were children in 2007 and now you're adults many of you are but going all the way back then there were persons who brought and began a beef or a conflict that no other people that I know of demonstrate or show and that is what we call the black gender war whereas you have this particular group of black male individuals black female individuals or soul brothers and sisters they represent a mindset. We cannot say this is something that affects black people. This is something that affects soul brothers and sisters. This particular group of persons, for whatever reason in their lives, they believe or they have a problem. Bitterness has come into their hearts, whereas this gender has done something to me or it is this gender is the reason of why we as a people cannot progress and move forward he say she say the blame game I have seen them come and go from the very popular to the ones that we know nothing of but clearly there is some type of sickness within this part of our community that they think that it is valid, it is credible that we take a small portion of individuals and make them the representatives of the whole. This is not just and this is not fair. Now, such as in the case of sweet potato pie, we can say that Black people, even though all of us do not like sweet potato pie. But there's a great majority of us who actually do. And we love and we make and we will buy sweet potato pie. We will buy, we will make cornbread and greens and chicken and dumplings. A lot of these foods are something that many of us was raised in. It's part of our culture. This Blame the black woman. This blame the black man. Is not part of our culture. It is a recent addition. To today's people. And it gets promoted. And it gets attention. Because of social media. Mind you. That does not mean. It never existed. It has been given a voice due to social media and it should have a voice 
so it can get attention to this sickness so that we may find a cure for the sickness that ails so many individuals within our community. Now we will listen to the hate and the dislike and the complaint from the male and the female. And this is not to say that these complaints, these grievances hold no credibility or they're not valid. This is not what we're saying. What we're saying here today is we can complain and we can write grievances but on a job if you complain on a job if you make a grievance on a job or you make a complaint to the police department we expect a solution and so we listen to the manosphere, the black manosphere, which is nothing but the black version of something that the white man created, but they don't, they, you do not see them acting and behaving towards their women like this uh, black man, these soul brothers, nor do the woman's sphere, these soul sisters, there is a group, and we call it the feminist movement. You do not see them going all out and making videos of the white woman attacking the black man, the white woman saying that the white man do this, and the white man saying that the white woman do this. You don't see all that. Why is that? But among or within the black community, we have this. And it's embarrassing. And it makes us look like clowns. It makes us look stupid and idiotic. Because here you are in your family. You're putting your family business out into the world. And other people look how wacky those folks are. And that's why they take advantage of you. Because they know that you have no respect for one another. And that your family structure is destroyed. Why not let us come in and benefit? Now if you listen to both the black manosphere or the woman's sphere. And we also have a, uh, a particular third party. This uh, lady calling herself Cynthia G. I, I guess she has a large fan base. She has a large following of poor misguided women. If you listen to them, they make good complaints. They make good grievances. But they offer us no solution to the problem. How do we solve the problem? How? What is it that can bring us a solution to the grievance. These things are not discussed. And if they are discussed. They are discussed. Like it's very simple. One thing. That you do not hear them talk about. Is self responsibility. Because we're taking. a problem or agreements about individuals and make it a gender problem. This is a problem of individuals dealing with other individuals. It really has nothing to do with gender. What's wrong with the black woman? What's wrong with the black man? The first question that must be raised is What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? That's the first problem. And Cynthia G. And those women that we went back and forth with. All of them never discuss. What's wrong with me? 
Am I am I part of the problem as an individual? If we examine the individual, the Cynthia G individual, or all these persons involved in the manosphere and the woman sphere or whatever you call it, they never examine what's wrong with me. What do I do? Do I snore? Am I selfish? Am I greedy? Am, am I a tyrant? Am I mean? What's wrong with me? Do I treat people like I want to be treated? Do I listen or I just want to hear myself talk? What's wrong with me? They never, you never hear the black men discuss what's wrong with them as an individual. However, if you listen to them get together and hear the conversations, clearly these individuals have a personal problem and you blame it, blaming it on a gender. And that would be fine if the gender actually reflects that behavior. Just like so many of us in the community, we like sweet potato pie. Are we a selfish as men are we pathetic losers as men or dusties as men are we all these different things is is this true and if it's true how do we solve the problem how do we go forward there is something called tough love there is something where your parents punish you for doing something and they tell you this hurts me more than it hurts you and it's true because a person your mother and your father who truly love you it hurts them to bring you pain you think they actually enjoy watching you cry watching you flinch in pain no they don't take no joy in that but the only way they know or how they grew up was I want to show you you cannot do that so I'm going to have to hurt you a little bit to teach you a lesson. And most of us who grew up in that manner a lot of us will say we appreciate that type of punishment. Well that's the best some of our parents could do. They are not psychiatrists. They're not therapists. They're not social workers. They doing the best they could be and most of us was raised in the Christian manner of things where if you uh, spare the rod, you spoil the child and we don't want our children spoiled. But I would say in this situation, before we get into how horrible the black woman is, how horrible the black man is. Why don't you take a look at yourself? What's wrong with us? What's wrong with our character? Are we liars? Are we honest? Do we have integrity? What's wrong with us? Deal with yourself first. And I guarantee you, once you deal with personal individual demons, your interaction with the opposite sex will get better because when we work on ourselves as individuals we bring that to the whole the reason why there are so many problems is because we have those who are in denial of the foulness of our individual selves we want to pretend we are holy and righteous and we're not and since we are not holding righteous, that can only lead to conflict. The black man, this male, gender 